Hi guys, welcome back to 411 Motorsport and today on the channel we are going to install a TR Lane roll bar on our 700 pound Mazda MX-5. <laughs> And this is the roll bar that we're going to be installing today. It comes from TR Lane and I paid £120 for this second hand. It looks like a pretty beefy bit of kit. It, um, it weighs quite a lot. Um, I'd probably say a good 30 kilos maybe. And you wouldn't normally want to put that sort of weight into such a light car. However, it's a safety item. There isn't anything in this car to protect you from a rollover. So this is the, the, the first modification that I want to do in order to maintain safety. So the first thing we're going to have to do is take out the carpet, um, take out some of the trim panels here. Um, to do that I might take the seat out first just to give me a bit more space to work. Um, and then with the roof up we'll have to remove the parcel shelf and then test fit it, see how it fits. Right, that's the seats out they were easy four bolts on each side this really needs a hoover um, unfortunately i don't have power out here on my garage so i don't have a vacuum cleaner and i can't really drive it to the petrol station uh, with no seats i'll get around to doing that eventually whenever i get a chance next step is to remove the carpet and remove the plastic trims either side Right, so um, all of the bolts from this parcel shelf are removed, so I should be able to remove this now. I just need to tidy up that wiring over there. Um, it was all fairly straightforward, just bolts to bring everything out. Um, what I tend to do, if I take a bolt out, I try to put it back in wherever it goes just for storage, because then um, I know it's not gonna get lost. In the case of these, um, these bolts and stuff like the seat bolt, I keep a little tray to hand, just um, it's an old cutlery tray. So the next stage, I'm gonna take the parcel shelf out um, and then we'll see about fitting. So those two wiring clips and this little bit of wiring harness, I believe is for the heated rear screen. Um, it wasn't connected, ours doesn't work as far as I know. The plug looks completely different to the one that's on the screen. Um, so I'm gonna leave this disconnected. I cut the, um, the trim clips off to get it out of the parcel shelf. I'm just gonna leave this disconnected and I'm gonna tuck it away nice and tidy when I uh, put everything back together. Um, but other than that, it was fairly straightforward. All I need to do now is um, offer up a test fit and see about any of this wiring around here that needs to move and this wiring as well. So I've just freed up a lot of this wiring, um, removed any clips, removed anything that's screwed into the car. Um, I think I'm going to have to trim this bit along here, looking at where the um, where it sits. I should be able to leave this front one um, intact, so I'm going to trim it from here all the way back to here, um, because this is where uh, this fouls on the roll bar i might have to trim some of this back here as well i won't know until i've got it in and i'm trying to push it back um, towards the rear of the car um, again this side also cleared up a lot of the wiring it's all sort of loose at the moment so that it's in a position so that i can move it around the cage as i'm fitting it so i just started to cut um, this support here to get the cage in and I noticed that it appears to just be spot welded in um, in sort of two or three places. So I'm going to try and drill those out because it might be a neater install than uh, trying to trim all along that edge there. All 
right, so with a bit of brute force and ignorance, I've managed to get this out. Um, I've lost two of the mounting points for the uh, parcel shelf, but once that's trimmed down, I might not even need them. Um, I'm gonna straighten this bracket up so I can still use it. I'm hoping that the cage will slot in and underneath there now. Now I just need to do the same on the other side. Okay, so um, we've done this side. I've trimmed and pulled uh, the bracket on that side and I've done the same to this side. You can see I've left the front tab again just so that I've got somewhere to attach the parcel shelf metal to and then just trimmed all the way back to there. I'm fairly sure I'm gonna have to trim some of this metal out as well and the same with that side, but we'll need to test fit it now just to see what I need to trim. So as predicted, I'm going to need to trim um, some of this at the back here. I have a feeling if I just trim um, sort of around here, uh, that might be sufficient. Um, I'll certainly start with that bit, same on the other side, um, and then we'll see where we go after that. Right, so that's one side done and trimmed. Um, it's not a pretty job. I'll come back in with a bit of spray paint um, before I put all this back together again, just to tidy up the edges. Um, but this is gonna be covered anyway by the parcel shelf. So now I just need to do the other side. It's in, kind of. Um, so what I've done is I've just put the uh, seatbelt bolts back in, which helps line the uh, the cage up in the right position. I've seen enough people drill the holes for the rear without lining that up first. So I'm gonna make sure that that is tight and in the right position. Um, as you can see, still got the mounting tab for the parcel shelf support. I need to find out what this does. Um, it's a sensor of some description. I think it might be the upright sensor for the um, seatbelt system. Um, either way, I need to find somewhere else to mount that. I'm gonna take it back out now, remove this padding, cause I didn't do that before. And then I need to start looking at drilling some holes. Okay, so this is where we're gonna to have to leave it tonight. Um, I've got it to the point where I've drilled um, drilled all the holes through here. There's one or two I can't get at, uh, one over in that far corner that I can't get at. Um, so I need a right angle drill adapter in order to do that. Um, I need to pick up some M10 high tensile steel bolts, which I'll pick up in the morning. Um, and then I need to make some plates up for underneath. I've got some um, 
thick sheet steel that I'll be able to use as a plate for underneath. Um, <clears throat> and what I'll do is use the bottom foot as a, as a template and make up a bracket and drill the holes in the right place. It's taken a few hours so far. Um, it's hot today, it's hot and sweaty. Tomorrow it's supposed to um, it's supposed to rain for quite a lot of the day. Obviously working on a convertible with the roof down in the rain isn't ideal and I don't really have anywhere to um, work under cover. I do have a gazebo so if I really need a bit of shelter I'll pop that up. So I'm just gonna um, pack everything down, park the car up for the night and then go and pick up some high tensile bolts in the morning. Good morning. It's not tomorrow. Uh, we had a bit of a storm yesterday. It was really windy, a bit of rain. So I couldn't really do any work on the car. So you've joined me a couple of days later um, and we're just gonna crack straight on with it. I've picked up the bolts already that I need, all of the hardware. I've got some high tensile N10 bolts with washers and nylock nuts. I just need to cut the spreader plates out of the, uh, the mild steel that I've got and then um, mark them all up for the bolts, bolt it all in. Uh, before I bolt it in, I'm just going to clean up all of the cuts and all of the, uh, the holes that I've drilled, blast a bit of paint onto it just to protect it, and then we'll bolt it all up and finish the job. All right, so I've jacked the car up, uh, taken the wheel off, and removed this um, small section of plastic. And there was just four uh, sort of screw clip things holding them in. Um, and then we can see the screws from underneath now. So I am gonna have to make two separate plates rather than one long one, which is what I would have preferred because there's um, a wiring loom in the way. So I'm just gonna crack on now with that. Um, once I've got the plates cut up and drilled up, I will have to drill the last hole um, because I can't get to it because um, this, uh, this bit of parcel shelf's in the way, it needs to go all the way back there. Okay, so that's the plates all cut up. Um, I cut them up with just a just an angle grinder and then put a flat disc on just to get rid of the coating and clean up the edges a little bit. I'm now gonna uh, offer them up to the cage, mark the holes, drill the holes, and then blast them with a bit of primer and a bit of paint just to clean them up. Right, so I've managed to get a spreader plate in here at the back um, and managed to drill another hole uh, from underneath to match the cage. Um, up at the front here, it's quite tight against uh, this corner here, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get a plate in there, but I have got a really, really thick washer um, and I'm going to cut a small plate um, just to cover this area here um, because there's a hole quite close to where I've drilled so I'm just going to cut another little plate here um, and then that'll be this side mocked up this is not a job I recommend you doing by yourself it's quite difficult to get underneath the car and on top of the car luckily it's quite a small um, obviously it's quite a small car so I can kind of reach underneath and at the top at the same time but it's still quite difficult if you have a, an extra pair of hands it, it really helps
Okay, so it's in. It is in. Um, two bolts there, two bolts at the back. These two bolts on the side are for uh, harness bars. So for now, I've bolted one either side to the chassis just to um, give it a little bit of extra. Two that side as well at the front and at the back, all bolted in. I'm now going to take it all back apart again so that I can clean up the holes, paint where I've drilled and also paint the spreader plates just to stop any rust. Um, and then I'll put it all back together again for the, the final fit. Um, from underneath you can see it's a mixture of plates and large washers where I couldn't fit a plate. And then over on this side the same again, this is all done with plates, it's all uh, talked up to FT. I've reinstalled whatever this was um, somebody told me that it might be an earth for the um, rear heated screen which I don't have installed so I'm not too fussed about that. So. Um, the next stage is to um, cut the parcel shelf to fit, get that all installed, get the car it back in, uh, get the seat belts back in, and then it'll all be done. What on earth is going on with the weather today? Literally, it'll be gorgeous sunshine one second and then piddling down with rain the next second. Um, I've got the wheels back on. Um, the trim's back in in the rear. I still need to sort out the inside, but I'm gonna break for lunch. Um, so whilst I was getting everything packed down for lunch, I realized that the roof um, wasn't fitting properly, despite it fitting the day before when I did the first test fit. What I found was that this, um, this hoop here um, is fouling on the back of the cage, and there was a strap running this strap here was attached here. Now there are two straps there. There's an elastic one and there was this sort of webbing strap. Um, I've, what I've done is I've cut the webbing strap and tied it up out here out of the way. And what that does is it allows for the this hoop to sit sort of half an inch further backwards behind the cage, which does loosen this off a little bit. Um, seat belts are all in, bolted back in. Um, so now I just need to trim and cut the parcel shelf to get it to fit. Now I've seen in previous videos um, from other people that they've had to cut the parcel shelf in half and fit it as two parts. Um, I'm happy to do that if I need to but I'm going to try, um, obviously try not to. So yeah I'll set the GoPro back up and I'll get cracking. Parcel shelf is back in. As you can see from the um, from the time lapse footage, I pretty much decided to cut it in half within 30 seconds of trying to test fit it. I figured it would be a lot easier to try and uh, mark up and cut, and it doesn't affect the structural rigidity of it anyway. It's only um, a bit of aluminium plate, um, so I've cut two holes out there and two over there. I've lost three mounting points, four mounting points, um, but for you know the job that it needs to do, it's absolutely fine. Now I need to do the sound deadening and the carpet. All right, carpet is in. It's not the neatest job in the world. Um, I'm not a carpet trimmer, so um, I might just take that out of there actually. Um, but yeah, the carpet's all trimmed up. Um, all the clips are back in place to hold it in place. 
Now I'm just going to finish fitting these um, trim panels here at the side. I did manage to vacuum under the seats. I borrowed a neighbour's vacuum cleaner whilst I had the angle grinder and extension lead out um, just to tidy up the inside. I couldn't bear putting the seats back with it in the state that it was. So yeah, we'll just crack on and it's almost done. All right, that's it, we are done. The job is finished. It's taken me maybe eight, nine hours in total um, over the course of two days to get this done. Um, it's definitely a job I would recommend if you've got an MX-5, it's easily done by yourself. It looks really good, it really sets off the car. Um, and once it's got some stickers on it as well, it'll look, it'll really look the part. It's nice and solid. All of the trim pieces are back in. I've kept the carpet um, and all the sound deadening because it is still a road car. I still am going to be driving it to and from work. Um, the carpet's all nice and clean. The seats are in. I gave them a hoover as well before I put them in. So yeah, thanks for joining me here on 411 Motorsport and hopefully this video has been useful if you want to install a TR Lane roll bar in your Mazda MX-5.